Right, hello, welcome to another Unreal Material Editor uh, tutorial. Um, this week we're going to be looking at gradient mapping uh, and how we can use that in our effects to um, get a little bit of extra kind of colour information and um, really powerful technique. Uh, and before we get into Unreal, I'm just going to demo it quickly here in, in Photoshop. So I've got this Fire Flipbook um, made in Maya with fluids, uh, just to uh, simple little fire flame here. Um, it's all black and white, it's all grayscale. So what we're going to do is we're going to use an adjustment layer in, in Photoshop um, and it's called gradient map. So we're just going to add a gradient map. So all this has done here is just inverted those colors and you can see here in the gradient sort of section, if we click on that, um, there's lots of different presets. Um, that one does nothing. It was already a black and white texture. Um, it's still black to white. Here you can see red and green. A lot of the presets aren't particularly useful. Um, I don't know why you'd want to go blue, yellow, blue. It's kind of cool, but down here at the bottom, we've got a couple that I've created, um, and this one's quite fiery. So it's, we're taking the kind of like the mid tones, the mid grays of our black and white texture, and just remapping it to this sort of like radio orange. And, and you can see as I'm moving that kind of uh, little node around, just getting different different remappings of those colours into that gradient. Um, really nice technique. Um, and you can see here, yeah, sort of a lightning-y blue um, kind of plasma-y or something. So, very powerful thing. Don't know how useful it is in Photoshop. I don't do much like painting or anything. But this kind of technique is something we can do in, in Unreal. Um, and it gives us a lot of control. So let's, let's jump over and have a look at that. So, here we are. Got the same flipbook. Um, just plugged in a, a quick flipbook node to it. Just for a preview. So it's just scrolling through that 8x8 frames. Uh, and I've got the gradient. So I've loaded in my gradient texture. So a couple of things. Um, you want to be using clamp, your x-axis tiling. Um, otherwise, it's going to treat the blacks here, the zeros, uh, as whites. Uh, and you'll get kind of like a, a weird effect on that. So um, just make sure that you've clamped the x so that we're never getting anything outside of the 1 or, or 0 here. Um, and then we plug this in. Um, and it's as simple as that. Um, our colour mapped our, our gradient. Um, very powerful, we can change our gradient. So here it is, that kind of like bluey gradient as well. So without having to remake this texture, you can just reapply it. And it's, it's a much more sort of colour depth. There's more information to it than just multiplying it. Obviously, we could just multiply by a colour. This, pick a kind of like G red or something. Black. That still colorizes it. Um, probably need to overblow that a little bit. Just that. Well, we're kind of like able to get a similar kind of result, but it's nowhere near as, as nice because it doesn't have that, that depth of color. There's oranges and reds and all sorts going on in this one. So, um, And there's a few other little techniques and tricks with this as well. So. In Photoshop, we were moving those points around and changing the look of things, but we can do the same thing in Unreal as long as we're doing those changes before we do the remapping. So if I take this this map, this mask, and just power it, do a contrast. Let's see if I contrast zero. Um, contrast powering by one does nothing, but if I come in here and increase this by two, see really eliminated a lot of the like the high level wispiness, all those mid grays have gone um, and you can push this even further and this is something we can control from a parameter like this or we can do control by the particle all that kind of stuff um, if this already had the color baked into our flipbook we tried to do things like a contrast on it you'd get the, the colors would sort of would work differently um, they'd interfere with that that powering effect so um, little thing and obviously you can multiply and have you as well. Because this is clamped at white, if I go in here and start multiplying this up, getting huge amounts more of that blown out. But it's never going kind of like brighter, so we'd have another parameter here. Let's call this one emissive. Now we've got any sort of control 
pre-mapping and then another control post-mapping. Go in here and make the rotor, make the whole thing glow. Sort of scale this down. Hopefully you can see you can get a lot of control and it keeps your assets kind of separated out. Um, so if this this fire might be a kind of, I don't know, a mage's fire or whatever and then you've got kind of like an undead kind of flame in here as well with a different type of intensity. Don't want any of that white. There. A lot of settings we can play with. Um, and it's very simple. And this texture, these gradients, they're not very big. They don't need to be hugely uh, massive textures. Um, 512 by just 16 pixels tall, so for quite a small texture. Um, our gradients. There we are. Um, simple as that. Hopefully that was helpful. I'm just going to link to a couple of uh, websites if you want to know a bit more about it. So on the Polycount wiki, go to gradient mapping. Um, there's some nice examples of here. They're using it for environments. So the sort of the wood planks and things. Follow the link here. It's a, a blog talking about it all. How it works. Um, which is where I learnt about it many years ago. Um, and it does get used in games. So this is a slideshow from, or a slide from a, a Halo uh, presentation from many years ago. Every single one of these muzzle flashes is the same texture. So you can see here that little cloud applied by this gradient get this kind of um, this result. Um, so that same cloud, obviously it's rotating and spinning out of different things and there's multiple of them so they're all combining together but there's only one texture used for all the different muzzle flashes um, and it's just this gradient it goes to dark and then white so you get this kind of nice highlighted ring um, and that's it. So it, it does get used in games, it's very powerful saves a lot of texture space. If each one of these textures had its own colour baked in already you'd have to have more four multiples and you aren't really doing much multiplication so we'll need to have all those multiples so. Um, nice little technique, hopefully something you can kind of bring into your own workflow um, and yeah, as always any questions, comments, etc um, send me an email and I will see you next time for another